Finally, turning to section 1.6 on page 7, we can come to the issue of stress. When speaking in a language, native speakers and anyone who has learned the language well do not emphasize every syllable equally. If you did, you would sound like one of those electronic voices on the subway or in some other context. All the syllables are there, but there's no rhythm. There's no flow to the language. Part of the flow of a language is the pattern of emphasizing, stressing some syllables more than others. So any word will have at least one stress in most languages, unless the word is so short that it is effectively pronounced with either the previous or following word. In Hebrew, most words have their stress on the final syllable. This can be a difficult pattern to develop as an English speaker because English much more often will stress the first syllable of a word. To give examples of this in English, consider the word alphabet. Notice that though there are several syllables, the stress it begins the word alphabet. It would sound very funny to stress the last alphabet. In Hebrew, on the other hand, most oftenly a word is going to be stressed on the last syllable. So show mer. In Hebrew, it would sound very funny to say shomer. Instead, it is shomer. When a Hebrew word in the vocabularies for this course is stressed on the last syllable, it will not be indicated. On the other hand, when the normal pattern is not followed and a word is stressed on the first syllable, that will be indicated. So the word melek that we have used previously in our examples, which is the Hebrew word for king, is stressed on its first syllable. And that will be indicated by an accent mark, a stress mark, to let you know when pronouncing the word, you should put the stress in an atypical place, not on the last syllable. It is important to not only say each letter right, and not only say each vowel pointing correctly, but to also consistently observe the patterns of stress. As you learn words and as you begin to speak and as you begin to remember words, you will remember them more effectively if you say them one out loud and two the same way every time. If you keep moving around the stress, so one time you say alphabet, the next time you say alphabet, the next time you say alphabet, you will in fact not remember as easily that it in fact is one word. So observe not only the phonetic values of the consonants, not only the phonetic values of the vowels, but also consistently observe the stress pattern of the language. This will take work initially, but if you put in the work now, it will ease your learning of vocabulary and the learning of Hebrew as we go forward. So now try to say this word. Shahal. The word is divided into two syllables. Remember that each syllable must begin with a consonant and have one and only one vowel. This means that sha must be the first syllable because it ends in a vowel. This is a CV, consonant vowel pattern, an open syllable. And then chal, which is a CVC, consonant vowel consonant pattern, what we call a closed syllable. Sha chal. Try again on this word. Lavash. Again, we have a two syllable word. La must be the first syllable because it begins with a consonant and has one vowel. And then vash must be the second syllable. 
it begins with a consonant, has one vowel, and then ends in a consonant. Because there is no stress indicated on the word, the stress is in fact as normal on the final syllable, la vache. Now try this word. Nahash. This is again a two-syllable word. Again, the first syllable is consonant vowel, an open syllable. The second syllable, hash, is consonant vowel consonant, a closed syllable. But in this case, because the stress is marked, the stress is on the first syllable, nahash. Finally, try this word. Omek. In this case, we yet again have a two-syllable word. The first syllable is an open syllable, consonant vowel. The second syllable is a closed syllable, consonant vowel consonant. And because no stress is marked, we put the stress on the final syllable, omek. Again, as you learn Hebrew, you will want to concentrate as much as possible, especially in your early chapters, on working to say words correctly. We will go through the vocabulary for each chapter, and the initial chapters will spend time helping you learn how to pronounce the words. You will need to have completed chapter two before you will be able to simply read text out of your Hebrew Bible because there are a few more pieces of learning to speak which will be necessary for you. By the time chapter two is complete, however, you will be capable of simply picking up your Hebrew Bible and reading out loud. You may not yet know what you are reading, but the process of practicing reading will pay off huge dividends as you get deeper into the coursework of studying biblical Hebrew.